Ballantyne, the Executive Vice President of the Space Studies Institute. And uh, there are many reasons that space is important. Uh, I guess the first and most, most uh, salient reason is that it offers solutions to problems that we have here on the Earth. Uh, the most important of those is assurance of a long-term uh, pollution-free energy supply and satellite solar power stations appear to uh, offer us a, an indefinitely uh, secure supply of energy for the planet, not only to replace the energy supplies that we currently use, but also to provide for much more energy than we currently use to allow people in developing countries to enjoy a much higher standard of living. That idea has been around for a long time. It's not been possible to build those because of uh, poor development of uh, space transportation. We have to backtrack a little bit and realize that space transportation still is dependent on throwaway rockets uh, developed from ballistic missile technology of 50 years ago. And so space transportation has yet to mature. Uh, it appears likely, though, that in the next decade or two, the smaller private companies will mature that space transportation and costs can be expected to drop by a large factor. When that happens, when costs come down, not nearly as low as they could come, but much lower than they are now, it will be possible to economically build such satellite solar power stations. Um, we look a bit further out, too, to secure supplies of critical minerals that are in short supply on the Earth, and the asteroid belt and the moon uh, appear to provide uh, possibilities to satisfy our demand for uh, much more rare materials that are needed for critical industrial processes. Uh, and these would be most particularly things like the platinum group, platinum group metals, all of which are uh, uh, really asteroidal in source, and we mine them from uh, areas that have asteroids have impacted in the past here on the Earth. If you look a bit further and you realize what the implication of cheaper launch costs and energy from space and materials from space, uh, it also uh, uh, allows you to start thinking about living off the planet. And it appears that in the next decade or so, very rapid progress will be made in uh, things that enable uh, uh, early sorts of space settlements, and those will initially be low Earth orbit space hotels, uh, the first of which are already in orbit. You might consider the uh, International Space Station a sort of prototype of space hotel. It's very expensive, but there are private solutions too, notably Bob Bigelow's efforts to build a, a small uh, man-visited or man-tended uh, habitats in orbit, privately. Um, I represent uh, the Space Studies Institute, and our mission has been to, f to uh, complete the missing technical parts of the puzzle needed to uh, use non-terrestrial materials for the construction of things like power satellites or like space habitats, and, and to thereby uh, expand uh, the economy and the wealth of the human race, and also to protect it from asteroid impact. Uh, something that we really must do. So over the years, the Space Studies Institute has pioneered the search for asteroids primarily to look for sources of uh, utilizable materials uh, for construction of power satellites and for supply of platinum group metals, but also to uh, be sure that none of these are going to impact. We started that uh, back in the late 1970s under uh, the University of Arizona's Space Watch program. We've also done most of the research uh, aimed at the use of non-terrestrial materials. So we've looked at processes to uh, get aluminum and glass and silicon uh, from materials on the moon. And most of the processes that, that have been developed were developed under SSI auspices. We did the first magnetic separation of lunar materials to get a feedstock for a, a lunar uh, aluminum process. We've also developed some methods to launch materials from the moon because uh, by going to the moon and using an electromagnetic launcher, it 
appears to us possible to drop the cost of uh, building large structures like power satellites or like space settlements in high Earth orbit uh, by a large fraction, so that a few hundred, a few tens of tons landed on the moon can uh, launch uh, thousands of times their weight per year uh, in materials from the surface of the moon to use in construction projects. If you think further along, you, you can realize with uh, cheap transportation to low Earth orbit and a thriving orbital uh, economy, both energy and materials, that we can uh, decompress the biosphere and uh, we can think about settling farther out. And the expansion into the cosmos um, is really our uh, primary long-term goal. But uh, just to emphasize, uh, at this moment, small entities like the Space Studies Institute, which has been in existence for 30 years and has been working steadily uh, to fill in the missing technical parts of the puzzle, are the only uh, folks working on this problem right now. Folks like us and like the B612 Foundation uh, are, have taken over NASA's function of developing advanced space technology. So if you look at where the uh, Highly uh, reusable rocket engines are coming from. They're coming from companies that the Space Studies Institute has made a small equity investment in, like Xcor Aerospace. Uh, NASA's advanced planning and advanced development has largely gone by the boards. If you look at who's uh, looking and doing the most work in asteroid defense, it's uh, by and large the B612 Foundation and not, not NASA. So uh, we would certainly invite everyone who views this video to visit the SSI website to see what we're doing, uh, get involved in the uh, migration of humanity out into the cosmos. Thank you.